Let's talk about the industrial electrolysis process. This video is part 4 of our electrochemistry playlist. The chloralkali industry. In this process, a concentrated solution of sodium chloride, also known as brine, is chemically dissipated during electrolysis, producing three very important industrial products. And that's what we'll explore in this video. The chloralkali industry is set up like this. So in this sketch, I'll explain everything you need to know before we go to the membrane cell. We have a battery signifying that this is an electrolytic cell. We know that electrons always flow from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal. Then because in electrolytic cells, the positive terminal is an anode and that's where oxidation happens. And we know that the negative terminal is a cathode and that's where reduction happens. Remember the electrolyte in this case is a concentrated sodium chloride solution which is called brine. Graphite electrodes are used in this case because they won't react with the sodium chloride. What we notice in this case is that there are bubbles forming on both electrodes and there's a clear change in the electrolyte. Let's talk about what happens here. Since we have the brine solution, we can say there are a bunch of sodium ions and chloride ions. The chloride ions are negative, so they are going to be attracted to the positive electrode, which is the anode. When they do this, they release two electrons and a chlorine gas is produced. These electrons are going to travel to the cathode site. where a reduction have to happen. But wait a minute, do these electrons take the Na plus or what happens? Remember the brine solution is mixed with water, so we have water around in this case. Now there's a fight between water and sodium ions. Which one has to win the electrons? We look at our standard reduction potential tables and we see that water is a strong oxidizing agent. This means that water is likely to be reduced compared to sodium. Then we can conclude that water wins the electrons and is reduced. So the water is breaking down into OH- and H+, where the H+, are going to be attracted to the negative terminal, grabbing the electrons and producing hydrogen gas. This is why we see two sets of gases being released from both electrodes. The remaining ions in solution are also going to combine, which is the sodium ions, and the hydroxide ions so they form sodium hydroxide now we look at the half reactions at the anode we see that two chloride ions are going to be oxidized to form chlorine gas and lose two electrons at the cathode we see that water is reduced to form h2 gas or hydrogen gas plus two hydroxide ions so if we write the net ionic reaction including the Na plus spectator ions, we see that we have two sodium chloride plus two water molecules forming two sodium hydroxide plus a chlorine gas and then hydrogen gas. So at the end of the chloralkali industrial process, we see that we produce three important products, which are pure chlorine gas, pure hydrogen gas, and pure sodium hydroxide. But what chemists realize is that this setup is not that effective. So what we do is we create the membrane cell because it is important to separate the anode and the cathode compartment in order to avoid the following issues. If the hydrogen and chlorine gas that are produced mix, they will explode and the hydroxide ions can corrode or oxidize the anode. If the chlorine gas that is produced react with the sodium hydroxide that is also produced, this will form sodium hypochlorite, which is not desirable. So the membrane cell, among other methods, can be used in industry for the chloralkali process. Let's look at what we need. We need a cell that looks like this and we'll put a membrane between to separate the two compartments into two. This membrane is called a cation exchange membrane because it can only allow positive ions or cations to pass through. Now what we do is we pour in brine on one side and we pour water on the other side. Then we put our electrodes in and complete the circuit with a power source. We know that on the brine compartment there should be a positive terminal so that the chloride ions can be attracted. On the water side there should be a negative terminal so that we can produce the hydrogen gas which has an H plus ions. 
Therefore, on the brine compartment, we produce chlorine gas, and this results in a dilute sodium chloride being produced, which we take out and make it concentrated again so that we can bring it back as brine. On the water compartment, we'll produce hydrogen gas, and remember the sodium from the sodium chloride will then pass through the membrane because it's a cation exchange or it allows cations to pass through. As we've seen from the previous slide is that the sodium ions are going to combine with the hydroxide ions to produce sodium hydroxide. So now we can write our half reactions. At the anode compartment or what I call the brine compartment, we have chloride forming chlorine gas and losing two electrons. At the cathode compartment, or what I call the water compartment, we have water gaining two electrons to produce hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. Therefore, if we cancel out the electrons, we get our net ionic reaction. So what we saw is that the sodium ions will migrate through the membrane to the cathode compartment to form our sodium hydroxide. Therefore, neutrality is maintained in both parts of the cell. Some of the advantages of using the membrane cell, among others, is that it is effective in separating the products and it does not contribute to environmental pollution. For example, there's no mercury used or there's no asbestos used in this type of cell. And this is all you need to learn about the membrane cell. We'll do more examples in later video. Remember, if you have further questions, just address them in the comment section. And if you want to join my online classes, make sure you go to the description and find out how you can do that. Okay, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Also, share my videos with all your friends. And make sure you get those A's. Okay, cheers.